step into the world of Punky Brewster. This classic TV show is packed with lots of feelings. It's got funny, surprising, and sad moments that will keep you hooked. What makes this series special? Share your favorite memories in the comments below. More surprises and nostalgia are on the way. Premiering in 1984, Punky Brewster became a beloved TV series. It tells the story of a spirited young girl who finds a new home with a kind-hearted widowed photographer after being abandoned by her parents. Set in Chicago, the show follows her adventures with her loyal dog and friends. Known for her colorful fashion sense and contagious optimism, Punky Brewster brings joy to the lives of those around her. Together with her friends, they face various challenges with humor and heartwarming moments. The ensemble cast includes Punky's best friend, her neighbor, and the photographer's mother. Through their interactions, viewers learn about friendship, family, and resilience. Despite initial doubt, Punky Brewster received praise for its positive messages and memorable characters. It earned multiple award nominations and left a lasting impression on audiences, especially children, who identified with Punky's carefree nature and unwavering positivity. In the series, George Gaines' wife, Aline Ann McLeary, appeared as his romantic interest. Additionally, Sherry Johnson, who starred in the series, is related to David W. Ducklon, the executive producer of both Punky Brewster and Family Matters. Interestingly, the show's storyline bears resemblance to the novel Silas Marner, where a reclusive man finds companionship with a young girl left on his doorstep. These connections add layers of intrigue to the background of the show's production and narrative influences. After two seasons, the TV show faced a tough reality, its ratings remain low. Despite a positive response from its young audience, the financial burden of a primetime series proved too much. The NBC president had to make a tough decision and personally delivered the cancellation news to the series creator. The scheduling of the show aimed to attract a wider audience. With episodes airing after football games often running longer than planned, they tried airing six 15-minute episodes. This was to appeal to young viewers, allowing them to watch and still go to bed early. One of the cast members had moved on to a different stage in life. As of June 2004, she was married and had become a parent, as shared in an interview on the Season 1 DVD set. Despite its popularity among the younger audience, the show ultimately faced cancellation due to its inability to attract a broader viewership. Punky Brewster, whose real name she detested, was Penelope. Her cherished song, I've Got the Sun in the Morning and the Moon at Night, emanated from a music box left by her mother before abandoning her at a supermarket. Solo Moon Fry, the actress portraying Punky, was named after this tune. The episode Fenster Hall Part 1 served as a backdoor pilot for a spinoff series. Originally, it spanned one hour, but was split into two episodes for syndication. Brandon Tartikoff, then NBC programming chief, played a pivotal role in developing the show. He named it after a girl from his past, coincidentally married to a Connecticut lawyer. She received a royalty check for her name's use, and even came out as Punky's teacher in one episode. Despite its short run, there was significant demand for merchandise related to the show, including items like mismatched shoes and a doll modeled after the main character. This interest led to over 30 licensing deals, and even an animated spin-off. Initially produced by the program unit of NBC, the first two seasons aired under their banner. However, when the show was canceled, Columbia Pictures Television purchased the rights for a hefty $60 million. The latter two seasons were then produced by Columbia independently for syndication. Interestingly, Jim Carrey auditioned for a role as Punky's school teacher, but was deemed too comedic for the children's show. This decision highlights the careful consideration given to casting choices for the series. Fred Gwynn, initially set to portray Henry, withdrew from the role upon being recognized as Herman Munster during auditions. Consequently, the character of Henry P. Warnemont went through a casting change. As the second season commenced, noticeable alterations emerged within the show's set design. Notably, the beige couch supplanted the blue-clad couch from the first season, alongside modifications in the bathroom, hallway, and front door of Henry's apartment. Solo Moon Fry secured the role of Punky Brewster after surpassing more than a thousand other contenders in auditions for the part. Henry and Punky can be reached at 555, 1D5, and 66. Sheree Johnson, the niece of the show's creator David W. Ducklon, auditioned like everyone else for her role despite being named after her character. The show got lots of fan letters each week from kids who loved the characters and shared their own stories. The cast and crew felt really happy to see how much kids liked the show. Kids often sent drawings of Punky and her adventures showing how much they liked the show. 
Many people saw Punky Brewster not just as a character on TV, but as a friend and someone to look up to. These moments reminded everyone involved why they loved making the show and the good influence they had on kids. Punky Brewster had become really popular with kids and had touched the hearts of many. Punky's dog Brandon got his name from then NBC programming chief Brandon Tartikoff. In the show, she mistakenly calls him Marlo Brandon after actor Marlon Brando. George Gaines, known for his roles as Henry Warnemont and Commandant Eric Lassard in the Police Academy series, starred in the show. In one episode titled The Perils of Punky, Henry's car had a license plate reading PPO work. In one of the episodes which featured a dog wedding, the series unexpectedly concluded due to the 1988 Writers Guild of America strike, catching the cast off guard. Sherry Johnson, who portrayed a character with the same name, revealed this detail. The show's cancellation wasn't disclosed until after the filming of the Four Seasons final episode. Susie Garrett, who played Punky's grandmother, shared the same name as Johnson's character, adding a personal touch to the show. Interestingly, Melissa Joan Hart initially auditioned for the lead role, later crossing paths with Solo Moon Fry on Sabrina, the Teenage Witch. In the series, viewers never see Henry's bedroom, with the Johnson's apartment and Marjo's house each appearing only once. The intentional mystery about Henry's personal space adds interest to the story, leaving fans to wonder about his private life. Meanwhile, George Gaines, who played Henry Warnemont, gradually lost touch with Solo Moon Fry, his co-star on the show. Despite their close bond during filming, they drifted apart over time. The absence of Henry's bedroom and the limited appearances of key locations in the series add to its charm. It lets the audience focus more on the relationships between the characters instead of their individual spaces. As the story unfolds, viewers get drawn into the characters' emotional journeys and connect with the broader themes explored in the show. After his role in the series, George Gaines worked on various projects, showing his versatility as an actor in different types of roles. As time went on, the memories of Punky Brewster became a distant but fond part of his career. Despite not staying in constant touch with Solo Moon Fry, the impact of their collaboration remained strong, and both continued to contribute to the entertainment industry. In terms of television nostalgia, Punky Brewster is remembered not just for its memorable characters, but also for the connections it formed among its cast. The occasional glimpses into the characters' living spaces, carefully chosen by the show's creators, leave a lasting impression on those who followed Punky and her surrogate family. The magic of Punky Brewster lies in the bonds that transcend time and space, making it a classic show. And so, the story of Punky Brewster, with its mysteries, heartwarming moments, and unforgettable characters, continues to captivate audiences, proving that storytelling magic can endure for generations. This reflection on the show, and the relationships formed on, and off-screen pays tribute to its lasting influence. In a surprising turn of events, the 1984 TV series Punky Brewster faced a tragic twist behind the scenes. Despite its lighthearted tone on screen, the show grappled with a profound loss during its production. The actress who played the beloved character's foster father, George Gaines, mourned the passing of his wife, Aline Ann McClurie, during the filming of the series. McClurie, a talented actress herself, passed away due to cancer, leaving a somber atmosphere on set. Despite the grief, Gaines continued his role with professionalism, portraying the caring and supportive foster parent figure for Punky. This sorrowful event behind the scenes added a layer of poignancy to the show reminding viewers of the real-life challenges faced by its cast and crew.